Hello friends, I am Ubedullah Kansari and welcome to my channel Hi It's Me. So in our last video we have discussed about syllabus, weightage and exam pattern of heat transfer. I hope you have already watched that video. If you have not watched it yet, the link is in the description. Now the, today we are going to start the actual content of this lecture series and the first topic is the introduction to the heat transfer. Okay. So what is the heat transfer? So as the name indicates, heat transfer is nothing but study of transfer of heat. So there is nothing much to explain in the word transfer. Transfer is nothing but simply a motion from one place to another place or change of space coordinate. Okay. But before defining the heat transfer, do we know well enough about the heat? Do we know what is heat? What are the various units of heat? Do we know what is the difference between heat and temperature? Do we know what is the difference between heat energy and thermal energy? All these questions we will going to answer by today's discussion. Okay. So these are the contents of this video. Temperature versus heat. What is difference between temperature and heat? What are the various units of heat? How to define heat transfer? What is the difference between thermal energy and heat energy? What is the difference between thermodynamics and heat transfer? And what is the need of heat transfer? what are the various applications of heat transfer these things we are going to discuss in today's video now the first thing is temperature versus heat so what is temperature so in simple word temperature is nothing but degree of hotness or coldness of the body okay for defining the temperature properly we must know something about the kinetic theory of the gases okay so you must have studied the kinetic theory of gases in the physics and according to that kinetic theory the kinetic energy of the molecules of the gas increases with increase in temperature okay so as we increase the temperature of the gas the molecules gets excited and because their kinetic energy increases okay so what is temperature temperature is nothing but it is the measure of amount of average kinetic energy of the molecules in the substance on the other hand heat is nothing but it is a form of energy which can be transferred from one system to another system as a result of temperature difference okay so heat is a form of energy like other form of energy like solar kinetic energy potential energy geothermal energy ocean energy etc similarly heat is one form of energy but there is a speciality of this energy it is energy in transit that is in this energy will always be in a moving form we can't say heat is stored okay now the important point here is temperature difference so just like potential difference is the driving force for the flow of electricity or current through the circuit Pressure difference is a driving force for the flow of fluid through the pipe. Likewise, temperature difference is a driving force for heat energy. And current always flow from higher potential to lower potential. Fluid always flow from higher pressure to lower pressure. Similarly, heat will always flow from higher temperature to lower temperature. Okay. So this is the basic difference between temperature and heat. One is the measure of amount of energy possessed by the molecules of the substance. Energy by energy means kinetic energy. And remember that it is the measure of amount of energy. It is not the actual amount of energy possessed by the molecules. Okay. So it is a measure of amount of energy. By it we mean there is a some direct relation between the temperature and the kinetic energy of the molecule of the gases. Okay. If temperature of the gas is increased, kinetic energy of the molecules of that gas or liquid or any substance would also increase. This is the meaning or definition of the temperature. Now let's see some other differences. So as I already mentioned, temperature difference is the driving force for heat transfer. On the other hand, heat always flow from hotter body to colder body or a hotter part of the body to the colder part of the same body. The usual symbol for the temperature is T and for heat it is Q. So the SI unit of temperature is Kelvin. Other units which are commonly used are degree Celsius and Fahrenheit. On the other hand, SI unit of heat is Joule. Other common units are BTU that is British Thermal Unit and Kelvin. Now what are the relation between these units? So in order to convert Kelvin temperature into degree Celsius temperature, simply we have to add 273.15 to be more appropriate. 
approximately we can add 273 in order to convert degree celsius into kelvin and there is a conversion or relation between fahrenheit and degree celsius scale also f is equal to 1.8 times of degree celsius plus 32 so, so if you put 0 degree celsius in this equation then you will get 32 fahrenheit 32 fahrenheit is the freezing point of water or melting point of ice and if you put 100 in this place so you will get 212 fahrenheit which is nothing but boiling point of water okay now if you want to remember this formula or if you want to cross check whether the relation you are using is correct or not then you must remember one point that minus 40 degree celsius in degree scale is equal to minus 40 in fahrenheit scale okay so if you put one value as minus 40 you will get other value as minus 40 if your formula is justifying this minus 40 equal to minus 40 then you can validate or confirm that your whatever formula you are using is correct okay similarly for the conversion of heat in terms of joule from btu and kelvin we have this conversion 1 btu is equal to 1055.056 joule approximately you can round it off to 1055 joule and similarly 1 kelvin is equal to 4.1868 joule okay now what is this 1 btu and what is 1 kelvin so as the name indicates british thermal unit so it is the unit generally used in english system So in English system the unit of energy is British thermal unit which is defined as energy needed to raise the temperature of 1 pound of water by 1 fahrenheit okay so the temperature of 1 pound okay and in the bracket it is written as lb so lb is an actually an abbreviation for libra which is a latin word which has meaning of pound now what is pound it is also unit of mass and the relation between pound and kg is 1 kg is equal to 2.2046 pound and if i divide this equation 1 by 2.2046 then i will get 1 pound is equal to 0.4536 kg okay now what is 1 kelvin it is defined as energy required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree celsius okay and 1 kelvin is equal to 4.1868 joule okay now suppose i want to calculate the energy required to raise the temperature of 1 kg of water instead of 1 gram then what would be the amount of energy required obviously it will be 1000 times of this value so it will be 1000 kelvin energy required to raise the temperature of 1 kg of water by 1 degree celsius would be 1000 kelvin which is approximately equal to 4.187 kilojoule okay now look to this value very carefully have you seen similar value somewhere else this value is actually the specific heat of water 4.187 kJ per kg kelvin now what is the specific heat it is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of unit mass of this substance by unity that is 1 degree celsius or 1 kelvin so now you know from where the definition of specific heat actually came okay now the next point is difference between heat energy versus thermal energy normally we think that heat energy and thermal energy are the two different name for same kind of energy now whether these two energies are same or different so actually these two are very relatable kind of energy which are same and also different at the same time now how it is possible so so let's see their definition first the difference between heat energy and thermal energy is that thermal energy cannot be transferred but it remains as a part of internal energy of the system and heat on the another hand is energy in transit that is energy in motion and it is the energy which always in a process of transfer which is always in a motion from a hotter system to colder system okay now if you still did not get the difference properly then in other words simply i can say that heat energy in storage form is thermal energy and thermal energy in transit is heat energy by transit we mean motion okay so looking into these two definition we can say that heat energy cannot be stored and thermal energy cannot be transferred okay the moment the heat energy is started storing inside the system it becomes part of the internal energy of the system or it becomes thermal energy it is no longer heat energy okay that's why we always say 
heat transfer we never say thermal transfer and all the devices like solar collector pv panels etc are called as thermal energy storage device not heat energy storage device okay now the next thing is what is the difference between thermodynamics and heat transfer okay so the first point is actually a summary of the difference between thermodynamics and heat transfer so thermodynamics tells us about how much heat is transferred how much work is transferred and what will be the final state of the system so normally in thermodynamics we know about the type of process we know the initial states of the system and by initial state i mean various properties of the initial state like pressure volume temperature and for defining one particular state it required at least two distinct property either pressure volume or volume temperature or pressure temperature okay and knowing the initial state of the system initial properties of the system and one of the final property of the system and type of process we can actually calculate the amount of work transfer amount of heat transfer and change in internal energy change in enthalpy change in entropy etc from the system on the other hand heat transfer tells us about how the heat is transferred and what would be the rate of heat transfer okay now in thermodynamics also we know how much heat is transferred here also we can know how much heat is transferred but thermodynamics laws alone cannot describe in how much time that heat transfer process can be accomplished and that is for transferring particular 10 kJ of energy how much time is required that time we cannot calculate from the laws of thermodynamics alone we will require to study laws of heat transfer also okay also thermodynamics cannot tell us about the mechanism of heat transfer or how heat transfer process is going to take place or, or what is the mode of the heat transfer okay the mode of heat transfer can only be identified by principle or concepts of heat transfer okay now the third point is heat transfer can also tells us the temperature distribution inside the body by temperature distribution inside the body we mean that we can draw the temperature profile at the various location of the system okay for example if we consider the ic engine as a system or the petrol engine which is operating in a auto cycle then by thermodynamics laws we can find what is the heat supplied what is the heat rejected in the various processes okay and what is the temperature of the gas initial state and final state of the process b but we cannot tell the temperature distribution along the system thermodynamics laws cannot tell us how much would be the temperature at the inlet valve or exhaust valve so that is what is the temperature at various location of the system this thing can only be known when we know certain laws about heat transfer also okay so although we know the temperature at initial and final state but for the intermediate state we must know the heat transfer principle in order to find the temperatures okay so when a system changes from one equilibrium state to another equilibrium state thermodynamic helps us to determine work and heat transfer it describe how much heat is to be exchanged during a process but does not hint how the same could be achieved and then heat transfer it helps to predict the rate of heat transfer between the surface having certain temperature and difference also so heat transfer helps us to predict the rate of heat transfer between the surface having certain temperature difference and it also gives us temperature distribution across the different surfaces of interest based on rate of heat transfer through those surfaces okay so this point i have already told you and the third point is this is also important point it deals with equilibrium states only so thermodynamics deals with equilibrium states only so what do you mean by equilibrium so for system to be in thermodynamic equilibrium it should satisfy the condition of three types of equilibrium that is thermal equilibrium mechanical equilibrium and chemical equilibrium what is thermal equilibrium if the, if there is no temperature difference between system and the surrounding then the system is said to be in thermal equilibrium okay a second thing chemical equilibrium if there is no chemical reaction occurring inside the system then we can say the system is in chemical equilibrium third thing if there is no 
unbalanced force inside the system then the system is said to be in mechanical equilibrium okay so normally in thermodynamic process initial state and final state would be in equilibrium but all the intermediate state would not be in equilibrium so thermodynamics deals only with equilibrium state what would be the initial state of the system what would be the final state of the system and what would be the amount of heat and work transfer required from either from the system or to the system in order to achieve this state that particular state okay but in heat transfer it always deal with non equilibrium state why because for achieving thermal equilibrium temperature should be same everywhere and if the temperature is same everywhere the process of the heat transfer cannot take place because temperature difference is a driving force for the heat transfer it means whenever heat transfer process is taking place then system cannot be in thermal equilibrium and if the system is not in a thermal equilibrium it cannot be in thermodynamic equilibrium it means heat transfers always deals with non equilibrium states okay now the last point is some important laws of thermodynamics are zeroth law first law second law and, and some important laws of heat transfer are fourier's law newton's law of cooling stefan boltzmann law planck's law wien's displacement law there are one or two more laws in the heat transfer which we are going to discuss in this lecture series and i hope you know all of these laws of thermodynamics i do not want to repeat it here but whenever required we will definitely discuss the statement of these laws okay so heat always transfer from body at high temperature to body at lower temperature so this is nothing but second law clausius statement of second law of thermodynamics which states that heat cannot be transferred from lower temperature reservoir to high temperature reservoir without any work input now since we have defined the difference between heat and temperature we have defined why there is a need of heat transfer so we now we are in a position to define the heat transfer exactly if you want to define the heat transfer as a subject then we can define it as whenever temperature difference exists in a body heat flows from a region of high temperature to the region of low temperature to so the subject dealing with the rate at which this process occurs and how this process occurs is called as heat transfer okay so actually there are three modes or mechanism of heat transfer conduction convection and radiation those thing we will going to discuss later on maybe in the next lecture or the next video the next thing is application or the areas of heat transfer so these are some areas or application of heat transfer design of thermal and nuclear power plant including heat engine and steam generator condenser evaporator furnace ic engine refrigeration and air conditioning units heating and cooling of fluids design of cooling system for electric motor generator and transformer heat treatment of metals etc so basically in short all those process in which either heating or cooling process is taking place we will require the application of the heat transfer now what is the purpose of studying the heat transfer these are the application these are the definition so broadly there are two things we want to study up from the heat transfer first to estimate the rate of heat flow through the boundary of the system under study so we need to there are some application where the rate of heat flow is important instead of amount of heat flow that is more important and second thing to in order to determine the temperature distribution or temperature field under steady and transient condition by transient condition we mean unsteady condition that is temperature of the system changes with respect to time at particular location okay now the question is why it is important to know the rate of heat flow when we can calculate the amount of heat flow through thermodynamics laws alone just we have to know the type of the process whether the process is isothermal adiabatic polytropic isochoric or isobaric so based on the type of process we can calculate the actual amount of heat transferred from the system or to the system why there is a need to determine the rate of heat flow instead of amount of heat flow okay and why there is a need of temperature difference everywhere inside the body not just at the initial and final state so for knowing the answer let's discuss an example let's consider a hot cup of coffee at 70 degrees celsius is placed in a cool environment which is at the 20 degrees celsius 
okay and is another case the same coffee which is at 70 degrees celsius is placed inside a thermo flask or thermos bottle okay now just compare these two cases now so for time being consider we have not studied anything about heat transfer so we only knows only the thermodynamics laws okay based on the thermodynamics principle what things we can calculate or evaluate okay so is there any work transfer taking place in both the cases no is there heat transfer taking place in both the cases answer is yes since the coffee is at high temperature and it is placed in a cool environment which is at lower temperature so obviously heat will flow from high temperature body to low temperature body okay now the question is whether here heat transfer is taking place or not since we placed it inside a thermos bottle which is surrounded by an insulation so the answer is yes here also the heat transfer is taking place but the difference between these two system is here the rate of heat transfer is very very low as compared to this system okay so, but if we ignore the rate of heat flow we just consider the thermodynamics laws then from thermodynamics laws we know there is no work transfer so from first law of thermodynamics we can simply say q is equal to delta u plus w and here since there is no work transfer so q is equal to delta u so the amount of heat transfer from the both the cases would result in the change in internal energy of the system and that amount of heat transfer can be defined by mcp delta t so in the both the cases amount of heat loss by the system can be calculated from mcp dt where m is the mass of the coffee cp is the specific heat of the coffee and dt is the temperature difference between coffee and the surrounding okay so as per thermodynamics there is no difference in these two systems but as a designer of thermos bottle i must ensure what customer wants okay for example customer wants to consume coffee above 50 degrees celsius okay that means if the coffee temperature reach below 50 degrees celsius then consumer has to compromise in the taste so the ultimate aim of the thermo flask designer is to maintain the temperature of the coffee inside the thermo flask at high level for longer time okay because no body is no material is perfectly insulated so heat is going to be lost that is for sure but here the rate of heat transfer is important in both the cases we know the amount of heat transfer which, which is going to take place would be same but this heat transfer process in both the cases would be at a different rate and as a thermo flask designer rate of heat transfer is more important for him. so as a thermo flask designer he must to know how much time will be required for the hot coffee to reach that temperature from 70 degrees celsius to 50 degrees celsius or for how much time that coffee would be kept in a thermo flask so that consumer can consume it without compromising in its taste okay so th this example justify our first point why it is important to estimate the rate of heat flow through the boundary of the system now why rate of particular process is also important for that i can give you another example suppose two friends bought a similar bike of same company of same module okay so initially their bikes are at same condition they want to compare their bike performance they have filled their fuel tank exactly by same amount let's assume that by 1 liter amount and the same grade of fuel is filled in the both the bikes now what they tell each other that let's see how much distance our bike will cover in this 1 liter okay so basically they are checking or comparing the performance of the bike okay so the model of both bikes are same the condition of both bikes are same the grade of fuel which is fuel inside the bike is also same the amount of fuel filled in both the bike is also exactly same but still we can get different output one friend can reach 60 km by consuming that 1 liter petrol and another friend can reach 80 km by consuming same amount of petrol and how this is possible it is possible by controlling the rate of fuel consumption okay by maintaining the economy speed we can actually improve the performance of bike okay 
so the amount of fuel consumption is not important in order to check the performance of the bike but the rate of fuel consumption is more important that will decide the average of the bike or you can say the performance of the bike so from these two example we can clearly say rate of a particular process is equally important as amount of the particular process okay now the second point is to determine temperature field or temperature distribution in the steady state or transient condition so as a designer of thermo flask i have to decide the material of the insulation and for deciding the material of insulation i must know the temperature at the both the end of the insulation whether this temperature particular material can sustain or not okay the temperature should be higher than the melting point of that particular metal and also it should effectively resist the transfer of heat so for knowing all these thing we must know the temperature at this layer also so knowing just the inside temperature of the coffee 70 degrees celsius and outside temperature of the environment 20 degrees celsius is not enough you must know the intermediate temperature or temperature distribution inside the system that is at the innermost layer of the insulation and outermost layer of the insulation and intermediate also okay so this temperature profile inside the insulation or the various layer of insulation can only be calculate and only be estimated by the laws of heat transfer it cannot be estimated alone with the laws of thermodynamics okay so for properly defining a system or properly calculating performance or some getting some proper output of the system how or with which rate the heat transfer is taking place and what is the temperature at the various locations okay so for these two purposes required to study heat transfer even after studying the thermodynamics okay so this is all about the introduction of the heat transfer in next class we will discuss about the various modes of heat transfer so if you have any doubt you can comment on the comment section if you like this video please share it with your friends and for getting more updates subscribe to the channel hi it's me Thank you.